when you think about it, certainly historically, the engines we make primarily are all about shoving something up and down and turning it into rotation. An internal combustion engine explodes some fuel, shoves a piston up and down, and we put it through a crankshaft and turn it into rotation. And of course the same with steam. Steam expands, presses on the piston, pushes a piston up and down. Stirling engine, we heat some air, its expansion pushes a piston up and down. And this is true for a whole load of weird and wonderful engines like the gunpowder engine, the acetylene engine, the coal engine. Now we do have rotary engines, and here I'm thinking of things like the Wankel engine and the Di Pietro air engine, but predominantly when you look at the engines we're using it's pushing a piston up and down and turning it into rotation because universally we use a crankshaft but that hasn't always been the only thing that we did we have of course explored things and some things have been abandoned but not because they're rubbish sometimes because they're rubbish and sometimes because we just move on and forget about them and there are some very interesting ways of turning that up and down into rotation that have been running for years. And this is a fine example, it's Murray's hypercycloidal engine and it was built in 1805 and ran continuously until 1961 and it's still working. It's in the Birmingham Museum, it's the third oldest engine in the world to still be working and the only other copy of it is in the Henry Ford Museum and it uses something called a hypercycloidal drive to do that job of up and down into round and round. A hypercycloid is pretty straightforward. If you take a little circle and rotate it around on a big circle, take a point on that little circle and it'll draw its own curve. These have been known about since all oh, the 1200s, but were a mathematical curiosity until the advent of engines and the Industrial Revolution. Hypercycloids, however, were more or less forgotten about until recently when these things came along. This is a hypercycloid gear, and it found favour in robotics because it's an extraordinarily good gearing system that can be put in a very compact form with higher gear ratios. Now there is a special case of the hypercycloid called the 2C couple. If the small circle is half the diameter of the large circle, then instead of making a curve, what it does is the point on the circle follows a straight line. And this is what Murray used. And it's also an example of what I go on about when I say that if you want to look forward, look back. A lot of these things are actually just forgotten. And of course the 2C couple formed an engine that's been running successfully for hundreds of years. So, I thought it might be fun to construct a hypercycloid engine mechanism. So how do we go about doing that? Well, let's start with some circles. Let's take a whole primitive and we're going to make that 100 by 100. Let's smooth it out. And then we'll take a normal primitive and we'll make that half that diameter, so 50 by 50. Now we have aligned those two using the align tool, or align it to the center and the edge, then that point of the edge will touch the point in the edge of the big circle, and we've got our 2 C couple because this, the orange, is half the size of the whole. But of course, we want something that's going to be a structure. For that, we need an outer ring. So if we take that and copy it, make it into a solid, increase its size 120, 120, and align these two to the center of each other. Then we can group them. And we get the basic shape we need. We've got one circle, the inner circle here at 100, this circle at 50, and the edges are touching. And where those point touch, when that rotates, will be the straight line that we're looking for. Now this is just a construction drawing, and construction drawings are very often the key to what it is that you're designing, because as long as we place everything in relation to the construction drawing, we'll end up with a gear system that we know is going to work, and if you delete the construction drawing, just look at the gear system, it can be a little bit of a mystery of how that was put together. But a construction drawing forms the backbone of what you want to do, so everything's in line nicely. So I've thinned those down to two millimeters and made them a light color so we can see what's going on. But we essentially need three important bits of information from this. We need to drive it from the center of the big cutout. 
We need this to have its own centre that it's going to spin around. And we need a drive pin right where those two touch. So let's do that bit first. Let's take a cylinder that's going to be the drive pin and we'll make that 8 by 8. Now we can center it to this. Press the shift key, click on it, hit the centering button, and we can center it to the circle there and right at the edge there. But when we center it right at the edge, the edge of that cylinder is touching the edge of this cylinder. And what we want is for the center point of that cylinder to be on the edge of that thinner cylinder. Now we know it's eight, so all we have to do is move it on by four. And now the center pin is right at the center there where we need it to be in order to drive it properly. And now we could need a couple of reference drive points. So we'll take another cylinder. And this time we're going to center that to there. Then we take another one, just copy it and center it to the center of the big drive. And those are the key points that we need. We could actually now get rid of that construction drawing. And as long as we maintain those centers, everything is going to be hunky-dory super burlesque. Now, this technique of using construction drawings is actually pretty universal. It doesn't matter if you're using Onshape, Fusion 360, whatever your favorite flavor of CAD is, or Tinkercad. It all comes down to the construction drawing and referencing everything to the construction drawing means your parts are going to be in the right place. So let's make the central drive arm. For the central drive arm, then we need that bit there, and we're going to copy that. I'd copy a lot, incidentally. Change the size of that to, say, 40 by 40 by 3. Then we can make that central to the reference cylinder that we did, just by highlighting it and centering it to that cylinder. And this one here, which is going to be driving the main gear, we also need a little step. Only this one needs to be about a millimetre higher to stop it fouling on that centre step there. So let's copy it again. And this time we'll make it, why not, 30 by 30 by 4. And again, we can centre it now to our reference point. And then if we join those two, click it, highlight it, and then group them, we'll get the drive arm. Of course, the drive arm does need a point at which it can be driven through. So if we take our reference cylinder, copy it, make it a hole, and then merge it with the two that we just made. We'll have a drive hole in there, which we'll see in a minute. This one, again, copy it, leave well alone for the moment, click on that, merge it, and that, when we drag that out of the way, there it is, that's our drive arm. And the drive arm is now perfectly referenced to these two, and we can print that off. And when we print it off, this is what we get. Now you'll notice there's a little indentation in there, and that indentation is to take that clip. Now I've done clip making in a previous video, but as long as you don't disturb the relationship between this and this, you can fiddle on with that as much as you like, making it pretty, and then printing it off. Okay, let's make the drive cog. To make the drive cog, go to here, type in gear, You'll find the metric gear there, pull it onto the work plane. And here we can see the module, which is a tooth size, make that 1.5, number of teeth 30. We'll make it seven high. And we can see that it's 47.48, so about 48 by 48, which is near the 50 that we actually want, which is pretty good. Now what we need to do is make a plate, because this, remember, pokes over a little bit and we want to carry it. This is 50 plus 4, so we'll make a plate at 54, 58, sorry. Copy it. 
58, 58. Raise it off the ground by seven because we want it to sit on top of there and make it three millimeters thick. Now we can click on this and this and this by holding the shift key down, center them, but center them to our reference point. Then we can see that the pin is now being carried by the top plate. It doesn't matter where that pin actually is, as long as the center of the pin touches the center of that. And it's the same with the gear. The gear can be out a little bit, as long as we don't change these reference points. Now we want to put that together. So hit that and copy it again, but make it a hole because you want to drive hole. Hold down the shift key, hit that. We need to carry the pin with us, so hit the pin. And in a minute, we'll need the gear. So let's just merge those. And if we hit the gear, hold the shift key down, hit that one and merge those. And when we've done that, we can take hold of that and move it out of the way. And there is our drive gear. Now you can see that pin actually is going right the way through to the gear. So let's just unmerge that. Raise that pin by seven. And remerge it. Now we can print that off. And there it is printed. Now I have changed that pin to a snap fit, but I've covered that again in a previous video, so I'm not going to cover it here. That goes on there, and the clip goes in place to hold it on. Now we have actually pretty much finished with the role of construction drawings in this key element, so we can get rid of those. So just highlight them and delete them. The one thing we still need is to make this into a ring gear because we need that driven gear to be driven around the ring. So to do that, highlight it. Let's change that to seven. Remember we made the gear size seven. Merge it and then delete that central hole. The thing we need here is a gear. So if we pull down the gear, and remember this gear here was 30. So this one, number of teeth, needs to be 60. And the module is 1.5. Now, to give it a little bit of slack when we're going to do this cutout method, I usually make that just a tiny bit bigger. So 1.55. And that will make a slightly wider, very slightly wider tooth space so that it won't snag as it moves around. Then we can make that into a hole. We can merge those to center them, sorry. Center them. And then merge them. And we get our ring gear. Now again, as long as we don't disturb these relationships, we can do whatever we like to make this pretty, including putting holes in there and pegs in there so that we can hold it apart. But now we need to do those changes on it and then print that off. Now I don't mean I'm doing everything step by step, or that would make a tremendously long and boring video. All I really want to do is highlight the role of construction drawings when it comes to placing everything and building the parts you want to build and making sure they're in the right place. So what I did was took that ring view we made and added these nice little projections on it so we can put a backing plate on there and these projections so we can have the sliding arm. Then I duplicated that and changed the holes into those pegs so that these two fit together rather neatly and then we fit those together and clip them in place. So once you've clipped the back onto the front, the driving cog goes on this axle and it slots in there, making sure that they're in line as you push it down. Like that. Now on the back, you take this piece and glue it on there. When that bit's glued, then this bit goes on the snap fitting and it only fits one way around, that way. And then the two long bits, one feeds through there and glues in here and the other front in from the other side and glues in that side there. When you've done that, the final thing to do is add this massive flywheel, which goes on there. 
So I stick it on the base and there it is finished. And of course if I turn that flywheel then what we see is this bar going backwards and forwards in a nice straight line. It's meant to be an engine obviously so equally if I push the drive rod it'll spin the flywheel turning that nice straight line into a rotation and we could put anything on here. I mean I could put a steam piston if I like, I could put a solenoid if I like. I will of course put these files onto Thingiverse should anybody want to play with it a little bit. I'm likely to do more with it but I wanted to highlight on the use of construction drawings. Using that mathematically correct construction drawing means that I could place everything. And even though we've got bits of slack in this, it makes no difference. It still allows that nice movement because we use the construction drawing to make it. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching. And please do remember to like and subscribe.